Hey guys, it's Jarvi from Wild Engineering, and today we're going to be starting our Mandelbrot circuit tutorial using the digital simulator. Um, so let's get started. If we view our slideshow here, we're just going to get started on some very basic parts of it today. So we're going to have a monitor that's 1024 by 768 pixels, and we're going to need to map the default view of the Mandelbrot that we have across that monitor screen. So I have that default view that we want to see up on there, and this is the example that we're going to be working with. So here it is in all of its glory. I just used Desmos, some guy's uh, Mandelbrot calculator on Desmos to get me, and I just screen captured this. So if we have 1024 pixels by 768 pixels, we need a way of mapping those like this. So in the bottom left corner we'll call 00, zero and then in the top right we'd call 1024 768 or well, in this case 1023 767 because 0 through 1023 is 1024 pixels just like 0, zero through 767 is 768 pixels. So we need to now figure out if we have that many pixels and we're going across, say, a distance of two, negative 2 to positive 2 here. Sorry, the negative got cut off. And we're going from a distance of negative 1.5 to 1.5. That's 3. So we have a distance of 4 and a distance of 3. So we're going to take 10,024 divided by 4. Well, 4 divided by 10,024 because we're going a distance of 4 divided by 1,024 pixels. And then in the vertical, we're going to be going a distance of 768 divided by 3 because we have a scale of negative 1.5 to 1.5 that's 3. So let's look at that here. In our real mapping we have 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 4 over 1024 is 1 over 256. In our imaginary mapping we have 1.5 minus negative 1.5 which was 3 and 3 divided by 768 is 1 over 256 and as you can see these values are the same so that means our aspect ratio in the x and y is the same and we don't really have to do anything fancy with our scaling. So now let's move on. Our circuit's going to need to have three inputs and three outputs. The inputs are going to be clock, reset, and enable. And the outputs are going to be the X and Y values along, along with the overflow. So this is going to be our pixel address generation circuit. So here's the algorithm that we need. We're going to say when we're in the reset, reset state, as in the reset input is high or the clear input, whatever you want to call it, is true, and it's clocking, we're in the reset state. And all that's going to do is we're going to, it's going to force us to have x equals 0 and y equals 0. But when we're not in the reset state, so when that pin isn't true and it's clocking, we're going to say while x is less than, a thousand, less than or equal to 1023 and enable is true, on the next clock, we're going to increment x then if it's still not less than or equal to, we're gonna keep doing that. If x is equal to 1023, on the, then we're gonna increment y and, dec and uh, clear x. So we're basically saying roll over x and increment y. Now we're gonna say if y is equal to 767, on the next clock we're gonna throw the overflow and set y equals to zero. So if you look at this nested loop, the way it reads is, well, x is less than or equal to 1023, if x, is less than, if x is equal to 1023 on the next clock, if y equals uh, 767 on the next clock, overflow is equal to 1, y equals 0. So we're saying like if it was x was 1023 and then y became 767, we've drawn the whole frame. We've generated all of the values for the whole frame. And so that's the circuit we're about to build. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up digital, and I already did that here. We're going to make it full screen. Alright, so how we're going to start this, we're going to go to File, New, which I did, that's how I got here. And then we're going to save this immediately. We're going to create a new file, a new folder, called, uh, well I'm going to call this um, Tutorial Rock. Okay, there's tutorial brought. So we're going to open that, and then we're going to call this 10 
24 by 7, 68, so there's no confusion of what this is doing. Okay, so remember our inputs and outputs that we wanted. So our inputs that we want, we need three inputs, control C, control V, control V, and then it's gonna be, uh, uh, we're gonna call it clear instead of reset. Um, we're gonna call this enable. And actually we're gonna get rid of that and go to components, IO, clock input. And obviously this is just gonna be called Okay. Okay, so there's our three inputs. So now what we want, we want to go to our memory and grab a counter. Alright, and so this is gonna be uh, we'll do we have to increment X and then we'll go to Y, if you remember. So our enable what it's gonna do is I'm just gonna move this pin down that and that's gonna bug me. Okay. So enable is gonna enable the X. So we'll label this X address. Alright, X is gonna be 10 bits. And Y will also be 10 bits because 10,024 is 10 bits. Well 10,023 is 10 bits. Anyway, um, so the output will come here. And we're gonna have to actually uh, compare the output we're gonna to go to arithmetic comparator and then we're gonna to go to components and we're gonna want wires constant value we're gonna wire that up into there we're gonna put this in decimal and we're gonna put it in 1023 and then of course it's 10 data bits and then this is 10 data bits and it's not signed. Okay, so now it'll tell us when that's equal to 10,023. Okay, the other thing that we need to do is have the clock signal come in and then clear, come like that. But here's the thing, uh, a few things are gonna be able to trigger the clear signal. So we're gonna need to put an OR gate on that. So we're gonna go to logic or right click on that and get rid of the wide shape like that and then one of our inputs will be the clear like so okay so now we're, we're getting somewhere so now we can have like say the output come here component uh wait let's let's do it like this components IO shoot IO output we call this X and it's gonna be 10 bits all right and then components all right and then when X is equal to 1023 what do we have to do we have to reset itself okay so now we can test the circuit now to test the circuit we're gonna start real time clock and we're going to, I don't know, put on like 5,000 hertz. And we're going to run it. We're going to press clear, enable, and then we're going to unclick clear and it should go. Now it's going to count up and then it resets itself. But it's resetting itself so fast that we can't see because we're going running at such a high clock. So let's turn this to 1,000. Enable. Still really fast. Uh, 50. Enable. There. Now that's slow enough. And what we can do now is um, advanced uh, decimal. And to run it again, enable. And then now you'll see it counts up 2023 and then resets. Okay, so now that we have something that generates the X address. Let's generate the Y. So what we're going to do is basically just do this. Control C, Control V. Get a nice looking stack like that. Rename this Y address. Okay. This becomes 767. Just like that. And we're going to say when this is true. 
here. I'm gonna bring this back. Alright. Now we're gonna say, well, why is less than 767? And x is 1023, so we need an AND gate here, components, logic, AND. We're going to rotate this, I think 90, if we do it, yes. And then we're going to unclick the wide. And perfect. We're going to say when x is 1023 and y is less than 767, we're going to enable this counter. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to bring the clock signal right up. I'm going to bring this clear signal here. Bring that in. And one of the clear signals will go just like that. And that's going to really bug me, so let's just do that. Okay. So now the other clear signal for this is going to say when it's equal to 767, we're going to have it reset itself like that. Then what we need to do is bring this value out, which we did here, and we'll call that y. Okay, and now what we'll do is we'll say, and this is true, we'll bring that out, Let's see, control v, and we're going to make that a single bit. We're going to call that ovf. For overflow. Basically, we've drawn the whole frame. That's what that's going to indicate. Just going to pull those out to make that look a little neater. And now we're going to run the circuit. But now we're definitely going to want a faster clock, so we'll put in 2500. Um, let's make sure that's in decimal. It is. Okay. And let's start and enable. You'll see every time this hits 1023, it resets to zero, and then that increments. Now this is going to take a years to get to 767. So now we're going to like just maximize it, maximum run it, and enable. And you'll see I'm hitting 3400 kilohertz, counting up here. So 3.4 megahertz I'm simulating at right now, which is uh, pretty nuts to think that I'm going that fast. You can't even see the overflow flag to go that fast. So if we, uh, uh, if I, I could limit this like 100,000. There we go. And now you can see I'm locked in at, a, at the bottom here, 100, 100 kilohertz, like it's locked in. So this is like really accurate to that speed. All right, let's move on. Okay, so what you're gonna do after you've saved it, you're gonna go to new embedded circuit, components, custom, and that circuit we made will be here and a little bit of the text is overlapping. You can fix that by making OVF all lowercase, but you're still gonna have enable overclock, overlap Y, so you can call that like EN, EN just EN if you wanted. The other thing we can do is then later they like, uh, update the circuit and change the shape for it so it doesn't do that but I just want to get this working first so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to components memory RAM graphic RAM just like that and then we're gonna go to components um, we want uh, arithmetic no flip memory counter we're going to tie the enable here, the enable here. We're going to tie the clock to the clock, and we're going to tie the clear to the clear. Okay. The output of this is going to go into the data here. The data bits is going to be 16. This is going to be 15 bits, and then what we're going to do is going to go to components, wires, splitter merger. Input splitting is going to be 15, comma 1, 
output splitting is going to be 16. And then we're going to mirror it. No, oh, mirror it the wrong way. Oh well. There we go. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to components, wires, constant value, rotation 90, 180. And we're going to call that one. Okay. So what we're doing is we're tying the most significant bit high. So it's telling it the RAM that we're going to be in uh, 555 RGB mode. And then the RGB values will be generated by this counter based off a of clock. So all we're going to do is just try to generate the X and Y and see uh, like a, a pattern emerge. So the low bits, the, the low bits are the X. So we need to do components, wires, splitter merger. And we're going to want to output the low 10 bits and the top 10 bits. And then we're going to need an extra bit at the top. We're going to need 21. Uh, yeah, 21 bits total for the way this works. And the input is going to be um, uh, oh, we want the, sorry, that's what we want the input to be. Control X, Control V, and the output we want to be 21. Then we're going to tell this that it's um, width in pixels is 1024 and a height is 768. And then that knows that we need 21 bits already for it. Well, we need 20 bits, but it makes it 21 for some reason. We're going to tie this most significant bit to ground like this. So just the zero. You can use a constant of zero too. It does the same thing. And we're going to say the low, the low bits are X and the high bits are Y. And then this is just like an overflow to tell us when like the frame is done. And to know, we can put components, memory, or sorry, components, flip flops, clock SR latch. Make that go like this. Lock and come into there. I don't know why I did that. And then the reset can come from the clear here. Okay, so that'll tell us when the frame is drawn. And now what we got to do is we got to what does it say? Store. If this input is high, when the clock becomes high, the data will be is stored. That's what we want. So Control C, Control V. Uh, we want the constant value, and we're gonna that to zero degree rotation grid. Then the clock obviously um, gets the clock signal from there. That's what's, what does it say? If this output is high, the output, so we're gonna tie that low, and we're gonna tie that low, like that. Okay, so now we should be able to run this once I put in some inputs. So components, IO, input. All right, so we're gonna say the clear. Let's say enable, and then we're gonna get our components. Wire, no, I/O clock input. And then we'll start the real time clock. We'll set it at uh, let's do let's do maximum again. Okay, and we should be able to run it. All right, so now we will clear, enable, and unclear. Boom! We just generated some colors, and as you can see, they're shifting down because we don't have a perfect modulus of uh, those values. So we get some nice scrolling colors on the screen. To just test out the circuit we just made and it looks like it's working looks like it's working really nicely anyway yeah you can see that we're refreshing this we're drawing right now at uh what does this window say 
uh, 2.8 megahertz right now, 2800 kilohertz. So if that shows you the power digital, uh, if this doesn't show you the power digital, I don't know what else does. But uh, uh, we're going to slowly build up on the circuit to generate Mandelbrot. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this first tutorial. It ran a little bit longer than I would have liked, but we got a lot done. And we're going to just continue chugging through this. And by the time we're done, we're going to have a Mandelbrot that allows you to zoom and pan. Anyway, see you guys next time.